It starts right now. A Renewed Mind, hosted by Dr. H. Dante Duckett, pastor of New Kingdom Faith Christian Church. Position yourself right now to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, here's our host, Dr. H. Dante Duckett. Hello, this is Dr. H. Dante Duckett, and you're listening to another podcast of A Renewed Mind. I'm so glad you decided to take the time and listen to what God is sharing with me to share with you on the power of a renewed mind. We have gone through six power-packed podcasts that have positioned individuals or helped to position individuals to use the power of a renewed mind. But we understand, as we've been going through these weeks, before you can access the power of a renewed mind, you must first develop a thirst and hunger to renew your mind. Uh, This week, we're going to go right here, go ahead into our next topic, which is actually a conclusion of last week's topic, which was developing the mind of Christ. Uh, Last week, we had a number of items uh, that we shared, and we're going to do a brief recap. uh, But this week, we're going to be talking about developing the mind of Christ part two. But let's go back a few weeks and do a recap to be able to help everyone get caught up to where we are currently right now. We talked about a renewed mind must be guarded. A renewed mind must be guarded. You must guard your mind. A renewed mind cannot be achieved until you decide that a deeper relationship is your only option. The first component, listen, of the process to guarding your mind is to humble yourself to resemble the form of a servant. The individual who humbles, who operates with the mind of Christ will refuse to to allow himself to be seen as anything other than a vessel being used by God. Listen to me as I share that again. Listen, the individual who operates with the mind of Christ will refuse to allow himself to be seen as anything other than a vessel being used by God. The second component of the process of guarding your mind is to raise your standard of living to reflect holiness. That is so good, y'all. You have to raise your standard of living to reflect a holy lifestyle. You can't expect to renew your mind and you still decide to do the same things that you did when you first entered into a relationship with Christ. There's a power in the process of a renewed mind. There is power in a renewed mind, but we know we have to go through the process of renewing our mind. And the only way you can do that, one of the key things to do that is you got to raise your standard of living to reflect holiness. The third component of the process of guarding your mind is to equip yourself with effective spiritual weapons. You can't fight a spiritual fight with carnal weapons. You can't expect to go to a street fight and decide to bring in weapons that won't allow you to defeat the adversary that's decided to play unfair. You got to come in with some spiritual weapons. This is a spiritual thing. Natural weapons will not do in this fight. It's a spirit. It's the spiritual weapons that you need to know how to operate. But before you know how to operate them, you need to have them in your possession. The last component of the process of guarding your mind is to eliminate worry from your life. <laughs> that is good. Now, it's amazing that we have to say, t- share that with Christians, with individuals who claim to know or have a relationship with Christ, but still operate with worry. You know, their their lifestyle is filled with worrying type of decisions, decisions based on worrying. The only way, I believe, one of the main ways to be able to guard your mind is you have to eliminate worry from your life. Operating as a servant will help the transition to renewing the mind and developing the mind of Christ. So this is where we left off last week. Look at what God showed us in this podcast. It says, developing the mind of Christ will require you to first commit to desire his virtues in your heart. It's one thing to have the virtues of Christ in your mind as, as you memorize them, as you read them. But it ain't have to transition into your heart. They have become a part of you. The one thing that the heart does is it pumps blood through your entire body. The virtues of God have to be pumped through your entire body. The way you walk has to resemble Christ. The way you talk has to resemble Christ. What you look at, what you allow your eyes to see 
have to resemble the virtues of Christ. If we are not careful, we can do ministry in the name of the Lord while at the same time destroying more lives than we build up. That's good. We can do ministry in the name of the Lord while at the same time destroying more lives than we build up. Developing the mind of Christ will secondly, listen, require you to commit to operating on an elevated level in the spirit. Here we go. Developing the mind of Christ will secondly require you to commit to operating on an elevated level in the spirit. Yes, we can no longer, God can no longer allow you or give you permission to stay at a level that is not elevated to the point where you're operating in the spirit realm. So many of us want to go back and forth into the natural, into the spirit. You have to elevate your level of operation into the spirit realm. Okay. Because developing the mind of Christ will thirdly do this, require you to take full advantage of the privileges you have been afforded by Jesus and remain faithful to his teachings. And the only way you're going to be able to operate at an elevated level in the spirit, you have to remain faithful to his teachings. Listen, we've been afforded some great teachings in Christ. He says in his word that guess what? If you but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things he will provide. That's living at an elevated level. You can't just, you got to pray for those ones that spitefully say things against you. You got to rejoice when you're persecuted. That's living at an elevated level in the spirit. Because you've acquired, listen to me, you've acquired the faithful teachings of Christ. Because developing the mind of Christ will require you to operate with an extreme focused attention on God. This is good, y'all. Listen, when you are at this point, when you start remaining faithful to his teaching, his teachings will make sure you focus your attention on God. Christ made this point. I only do what I see the Father doing. Oh, my, my. That's the virtues of Christ. That's living at an elevated level in the spirit. I only do what I see the Father doing. That's good. So you keep your focus. It's an extreme. I had to use that. It's an extreme focus. It's a single, Lord have mercy. It's a single minded focus on God. Because God is not going to allow you to do anything that's outside of his will as long as you're following him. Developing the mind of Christ will require you to be to behold yourself as a blessing versus looking for a blessing. This is going to empower someone right here. Every blessing you've been praying for is already in you. I just set somebody free. I just literally set somebody. Every blessing you have been praying for. God has wanted me to tell you today that it's already in the kingdom of God is what is within you. Hey, that means everything I need is in me already. The idea is already there. The thought on how to get the action plan to help me accomplish the goal is already there. The goal God gave me and he's also given me the vision and I'm sorry, in the action plan to make it manifest. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So what God says, stop looking for a blessing and start operating as the blessing. That's good stuff. That's good. That's good. Listen, the decision you made to help someone become stable is worth more than you can put value to. That was my last point on the last one on the last podcast. The decision you made to help someone become stable is worth more than then you can put a value to you. There's more to developing the mind of Christ. When you are developing the mind of Christ, you must initiate the process of elevating, evaluating, I'm excuse me, evaluating what you value. Because whatever you value is the direction you are headed. Oh, that's, I'm t- listen to me. If you value money, Everything you do is going to be, every decision you make is going to be based on how much money you're going to get. That's good. The moment you understand 
that you are headed, the direction you're headed in is based on what you value. I'm telling you, take a look at your life right now. Take a good look at your life right now. Look at how you make decisions. I guarantee if you sit back and you look at how the deci- how how you made the decision and what decision you made, it was based on what you value. So what is that saying to us today? What is that saying to us on this podcast? We need to make sure our values line up with God. We need to make sure our values line up with the mind of Christ. Because as we move, whatever direction, listen, your whatever direction your head is in, that's the direction your body is going. Try to walk and have your head turned sideways. You're not going to get very far. And if you do get far, you're going to go at a very slow pace. But when your head is turned straight, that's the direction your body's going in. So what we're going to talk about and we're going to focus on tonight is that you have to understand and evaluate. First of all, you got to evaluate what you value because until you value what God values and until you value what Christ values, you're not going to be able to re- operate in the po- with the power of a renewed mind. You're going to constantly, constantly live a carnal life because the only thing you value is based on what you desire, not on what God has for you. So let's go. Let's dig. dig let's dig deep in. Your value system has been constructed by what has become a desire. This is really good, y'all. I'm hoping y'all taking notes because we can already start. I need you to get something to write down with. I'm telling you because these this podcast, if you listen to it over and over and over again and you pray and ask God for greater level of discernment, I'm here to tell you that he will bless you and your mind will start turning. Your mind will start uh, being reshaped and renewed in order to you to start operating and start manifesting and start articulating what I'm teaching you. So look at what I want to make this point to you. Listen, the first point I want to make to you. We typically underestimate the importance of our values and how it drives us into areas that are counterproductive to our growth as a Christian. Listen, we underestimate the importance of our values. What you what you look at on TV or you watch on your Netflix or whatever streaming service you watch, that's what you value. You like comedy, you value laughing. You like drama, you value the the uh, the intensity. You love you love to to try to figure things out. You may value conflict. But I'm telling you, watch, evaluate the decisions, your desires, it is letting you know what you value. And many of us underestimate the importance of values and how it drives us into areas that are completely counterproductive to our growth as a Christian. Many of us value money. We understand the power of money. But when you place too much value on the acquisition of money, listen, in order to accumulate it, now money is in complete control of you. Our values must be put in check. You're going to make, if you value money that much, every decision you make is going to be based on how much you can accumulate. Ask me how I know. I remember that as a loan officer, I was a loan officer in my vocation. And the only thing I wanted to do is to maximize the amount of money I got off of each deal. And that was counterproductive to the values that God has for us. I was still a Christian, but my values, what I desired was counterproductive to my growth. I was always getting, I was it seemed, I didn't know why I wasn't getting as far as I, I knew it. I knew that I had the, I had the intellect, I had the knowledge, I had the degrees, I had everything, but it wasn't that. It wasn't that, it was what I was valuing. And I'm trying to help somebody tonight. You have to learn to adjust. You got to adjust that value system. And that value system is going to come when you take serious renewing your mind. Listen to me. Our values must be put in check because it has been affecting how we respond to God's call on our life. We all have to make this decision. If the job has offered overtime and you really need the overtime, but you have already set the time to do the work for the kingdom, what typically wins? The overtime will win because we value accumulating money. I don't try to be super holy now, but because your lifestyle and your calendar are 
great indicators of what you value. I'm, I'm here to tell. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Listen to me. Your lifestyle and your calendar are a great indicator of what you value. This is not to shame anyone. It's just to shed light on the fact. Your calendar, your checkbook, we don't even use checkbooks anymore. Your check registry, when you pull off your, when you go online and you check your, look at what you spend on. Look at what you spend. That's what you value. I'm just here to help you. I'm not here to shame you. I'm here to help shed some light so you can make the adjustment. Okay. In order, listen, in order to develop the mind of Christ, in order to reap the rewards from this life in Christ, you must evaluate and make the adjustments to what you value. Let me help someone here. You must never have enough. You will never have enough money. Anything that you value above your relationship with God is out of order. Listen, go, go to Matthew 10, 34 and 39. Matthew, don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. I've come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Does, listen, God, do you think God is trying to cause division? No, he's trying to put things in order. Get this, y'all. He knows that we value all of these relationships, relationships described that I just described. However, if we place more value on them than we do God, then that's when we have the problem because your value system is controlling your thinking. Do a mental inventory of your thought process that you had today. Whatever you had on your mind more is what you value. Jesus knew how much our family meant to us. He knew he, he is not telling us not to love our family. He is telling us that no one comes before him. You remember the story of Abraham and Isaac? God told Abraham to go to a mountain with his son. He didn't tell him what he wanted to do. Abraham did what God commanded him to do. God wanted to see who or what Abraham valued more. Abraham loved his son. But when it came time to sacrifice his son on the mountain, Abraham didn't hesitate because he valued his relationship with God more than he did his son. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to get this. Y'all really have to get this. God knows what's in your heart and he's trying to help you develop the mind of Christ. Listen, Christ had a one track mind. But he valued one thing more he, because he valued the only one thing, and that was pleasing his father. He valued the only thing he had on his mind was pleasing his father. Because when you please the father, everything else will fall in place. If you are all over the place trying to do everything, you typically accomplish nothing. And if you do accomplish anything, it was done with very little impact. Therefore, listen, y'all. My thought tonight is, listen, in order to continue to develop the mind of Christ, you must begin to evaluate your, your, evaluate your values and adjust them if necessary. Listen, let's set the foundation of our teaching tonight. Let's go to uh, John 4, 13 and um, 15. John 4, 13 and 15. I'm reading from the New King James. Listen here. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, they will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, my springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. That's good, sir. <laughs> Give me this water. This is what God is trying to do in your life. To give you the water that make you only thirst after him. When you get this water, all of your values will be shifted. Everything that was of little value will take a back seat to God. 
because you will desire only this water. This is the water that will be attempting to, this is the water, really, if you think about it, has been attempting to find you, to erupt in you the fountain that has been plugged up by the worries of life. I feel good this, this evening, y'all. I feel really good doing this podcast because there's somebody here listening. You, you're getting this. There are people in your space, but you have the water that can nourish them back to life. Listen. Does anyone know how to prime a water water well pump? Anybody y'all know how to prime a water? What you need, what do you think you need to prime a water well pump? Water. Most of the persons in your space need is for you to prime their pump with your water. Y'all, listen to me. The only way you prime a water well pump for it to pump water is it has to have water. Most of the persons in your space are in need of your water to prime their pump. The fountain in you that will help transform their life is in you. Once their pump is primed, then they are open to changing what they value. This woman valued water, but Jesus said, you really don't need water. (laughs) You need me. Yeah. Let's go to Isaiah 44, 1 and 3. Listen. Yet hear now, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I've chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurem, whom I've chosen. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty. This is good, y'all. And floods on the, on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. Look at this point. I need you to write this down. Please write this down. When developing the mind of Christ, you must begin to value the multiple dry seasons that will come upon your life. Y'all please get this. I'm learning that these dry seasons that we encounter are not sent to hurt us. They're not sent to make us work harder. They are intended to create a greater thirst in us because we value the benefits of being a child of God more than the relationship we have with God. Let me repeat that. I'm learning that these dry seasons were that we encounter are not intended to hurt us. They are not sent to make us work harder. They are intended to create a greater thirst in us because we value because we value too much of the benefits of being a child of God more than the relationship we have with God. We tend to look at the dry season as a curse God put on us or that we've done something wrong. Listen, listen to this. Don't we don't forget this story. Remember the story. Remember when Elijah the prophet declared a drought in the land? He just did what God told him to do. The drought, listen y'all, also affected him. He only did what God told him to do, and he ended up in a dry season. Write this down. Your obedience to the word of God will often put you in a dry season. Listen, when you find yourself in that season, God has declared, I will pour water on him who is thirsty. When you find yourself in a dry season, know what God, know that God is trying to create a sensitivity to his will in your life. When Elijah went through that dry season, you know what he did? He followed God's command and went to the brook. And then once the brook dried up, his ear was so attuned to God. God then told him to go to a widow, a broke widow to get fed. The dry season is intended to help you get more in tune to God. This is good, y'all. This sensitivity is part of the process of developing the mind of Christ within you. Because you will want to get to know what he is doing through you. Therefore, you will thirst for more presence of his presence in your life. I told you before that this is a season of soaking. Soaking in his word, in his presence to see his next move. Don't make the mistake of trying to come out of the dry season too soon. Let me repeat that. Don't make the mistake of trying to come out of the dry season too soon. He will sustain you in that season. 
only to launch you into your next. The dry season will require you to sit, listen, and wait. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter 2, 1 and 3. Listen what it says. 1 Peter 2, verses 1 and 3. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Secondly, when developing the mind of Christ, you must begin to value the power that the word of God has in your overall spiritual growth. This may seem obvious, but more often than you can imagine, the word of God has power over most persons. But most persons do not understand the power of the word of God because all they see are words on a page. They remember their English teacher trying to force them to read, um, read books that had no significance. But now we when we see the word of God, the same now we begin to see the word of God the same way. Therefore, when we see the Bible, it looks very intimidating. So many pages, the words are small. And you say to yourself, I don't understand what God is trying to say. But the this word has the power to change everything. It has the power to feed you when you're hungry. This word is alive. You may read one story this week, then read the same story next week, but get a whole new meaning because the word of God fits the moment that you're in your life. It gives you the solution to your problem on a personal level because your problem is not a, is not my problem You're, because your problem may not be my problem and my problem is definitely not your problem. But God who knows all has a word to fit all of our problems. Is that good news? But when you read it, it creates a thirst in you that will want you to own, not only be around real folk who are hungry and thirsty like you. When I see the word pure, I think of the word real, no additives or preservatives. It's pure. It's pure. This is why it's hard for many of us to be around fake people because we crave only the pure folk. Anything pure will produce growth within you. This is why it's so vital that your life have a diet that's dominated by pure products. My God, I'm talking about your spiritual diet. You got to dominate. It has to dominate your life. Purity has to dominate. Holiness has to dominate your life. And then much of this has to be done. Therefore, you have to digest this word daily. Write this down. Write this down. The word of God, which is pure. Listen, was written by flawed people with the help of a flawless God. The new habits you're trying to create, the old habits you're trying to break, are accomplished through your thirst <laughs> and intake of the word. Because the enemy's job is to try to get you to do something you're not supposed to do. But when you value your relationship with God, those temptations become non-issues in your life. Let me show you in the word. Let me go to Matthew 4, 1 through 7. This is going to be a long text, but let me read it for you, okay? Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights after he was hungry... Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. He shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands you shall bear up least your at least you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said, it is written again. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Thirdly, this is the third point y'all want to give you. When developing the mind of Christ, you must begin to value the higher levels of Christian living with the assistance of the word of God. You remember I talked about having elevated levels of thinking, elevated levels of, of learning. This is what God wanted me to help you. In order to, Operate at a higher level, you need to get an assist from the word. Christ in this, his dry season became because he accepted the assignment God gave him. Listen, Christ in his dry season was in a dry season because he accepted the assignment God gave him. 
I don't know who needs to hear this, but this dry season that you're in right now is not designed to hurt you. Christ was in the desert. He was led there by God into the desert. The dry seasons are ordained by God for your growth. However, the devil is still going to do his job to get into your mind. Jesus was in the desert for 40 years. How many years was the children of Israel in the desert? How many days in the Lent season? You see how important the numbers are to God? 40. They were there 40 years. Jesus was in the desert for 40 days. But you, 40 days, 40 years, or 40 minutes is too long to wait for God to move in your life. This is why developing the mind of Christ will help you to value higher levels of living. Higher level Christians are not anxious for not, for anything. Huh? They don't worry about what the devil is trying to do. In fact, when you operate on higher level on a higher level, you acquire different tactics to fighting the devil. Before Christ, we had to go toe to toe with the devil. In this higher level of learning, we let the word do the work. Come on, that's good right there. We let the word of God do the work. There are certain things you don't respond to. You let the word of God respond for you. When an enemy gets into your mind and tells you that you are broke and your natural and your natural looks like it, what does the word say? He will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Come on. When the enemy gets into your mind and your body tells you you are sick, what does the word say? He sent his word to heal your disease. Let the word do the work. Jesus was being tempted by the devil, but he valued his relationship with God more than feeding his hunger. Developing the mind of Christ will force you to make some hard choices. Go to Matthew 5, 6 and 8. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Lastly, when developing the mind of Christ, you must begin to value the attributes that are pleasing to God. Listen, God seems to bless folk who thirst and hunger. I'm here to tell you, who thirst and hunger for righteousness because this is an expectation. Ha. God will not give you a thirst for righteousness, which means right living. This is your responsibility. It's your responsibility to thirst for living right. We expect God to do too much when much of it is on us. These attributes must become your top priority. Operating with these attributes in every area of your life, you are not allowed to close off one area of your life from God, but then expect him to bless your whole life. He's expecting to get all of you because when you are ready to live a righteous life, you will do it. But most of us wait until it's the last thing we can do. We wait until we have tried all of our other options. But God sent me here as you listen to declare when you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, he will provide all your needs. This is why you need to make sure you are operating in mercy at all times. Because when it's your turn to receive mercy, you need to make sure you have enough. Mercy seeds in the ground to reap a harvest. Let me repeat that. Listen, because when it's your turn to receive mercy, you need to make sure you have enough mercy seeds in the ground to reap a harvest. If you're still planting seeds that are mean, coupled with complaining, a complaining spirit, don't expect the harvest of mercy to come your way. This is why every chance I have the opportunity to be nice, I will go out of my way to do it because I know I will need to reap a harvest very soon. Then the pure, listen to what it says, then the pure heart are the ones who operate with the right motives. These are the ones who will see God. Look, I ain't doing all this stuff only to get to the end and for him to say, depart from me. I know not who you are you better start planting seeds of holiness start planting seeds of right living so you can continue to develop the mind of christ our podcast tonight dove a little deeper into developing the mind of christ 
If you can't remember all that I shared, go back and listen to this podcast again. The key area, the key point that I need to make is you're going to have to shift or adjust your value system. You're going to have to adjust your value system. Because what God needs from you is to develop the mind of Christ in order for you to operate in the power of a renewed mind. Be with me next time on A Renewed Mind. This is your host, Dr. H. Dante Duckett. You have just been blessed by the transformational teaching of Dr. H. Dante Duckett. Tune in next time to another segment of A Renewed Mind.